Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Woo. Oh, it is so good to see all of you here this morning. We are delighted to have an opportunity for the Riverdale Presbyterian Fellowship and the Indonesian American Presbyterian Church and the Warner Memorial Presbyterian Church to worship here together today on this Pentecost Sunday when we celebrate the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. We are so excited also to be able to uh, baptize and confirm and welcome so many young people in our midst this morning. What a delight this will be. So as we get going this morning, I'm gonna teach a couple of songs that we're gonna sing in worship. And so that we don't give half ripped, wrapped gifts to God, and so that we know what we're giving and we give it well. Um, I want to take just a couple of minutes and teach these to you. These come from different parts of the world, and some will sing together and some will sing in parts. So, uh, the first I would like is, we're going to sing this. This is American. This was written by a uh, father and daughter uh, for a graduation. And uh, it goes like this. La 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 Ready? La 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 Listen. La 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 Very similar but it's slightly different. La 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 Wait. La 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 Ready? La 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 Let's do that one again. La 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 Let's do it together. La 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 Oh, this next one comes from Tembe near Pretoria in South Africa. Um, and so women here. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Women here. Amen, amen. One more time. 
here. Amen. 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 Keep going. Amen. Women here. how professional we are vocally we're going to offer something in four parts to god and in three languages are you ready okay so this tune comes from the democratic republic of congo of the congo repeat after me mungu ni mwema mungu ni mwema Mungu ni mwema. Yes, this is Swahili and it means know that God is good. All right. So on this side, women, uh, Mungu ni mwema. Mungu ni mwema. Mungu ni mwema. Ni mwema. Ni mwema. Got it? Mungu ni mwema, Mungu ni mwema, Mungu ni mwema, ni mwema, ni mwema, Mungu ni mwema, Mungu ni mwema, Mungu ni mwema, ni mwema, ni mwema, ni mwema, Mungu ni mwema. Mungu ni mwema, Mungu ni mwema, ni mwema, ni mwema, Mungu ni mwema, Mungu ni mwema, Mungu ni mwema, ni mwema, ni mwema. One more time, you're doing great. Mungu ni mwema, Mungu. Upper, upper, the man over here. Mungu ni mwema, Mungu ni mwema, Mungu ni mwema, ni mwema, ni mwema, Mungu ni mwema, Mungu ni mwema, Mungu ni mwema, ni mwema, ni mwema, do that. Mungu. Ah, and the men here, Mungu ni mwema, Mungu ni mwema, Mungu ni mwema, ni mwema, ni mwema, Mungu ni mwema, Mungu ni mwema, Mungu ni mwema. these parts and we're going to sing in Swahili. We're going to sing Know That God is Good in English and then we are going to sing in Hebrew Halle Hallelujah. Halle Hallelujah. All right, let's stand and sing. Women here. Mungu ni mwema. Mungu ni mwema. Mungu ni mwema.
Now that your voices are warmed up, will you please rise in body or spirit to join me in the call to worship? It's a responsive call to worship. I will sing to God for the rest of my life. I will sing praise to God as long as I live. May my words be pleasing to God. The Lord is the one who makes me happy. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord. We'll now join together and sing hymn number 307, God of Grace and God of Glory. Maybe seated. The truth of God's amazing love is this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, Christ rose for us, and Christ reigns for us. With assurance of God's reconciling love, let us confess where we have fallen short using the unison prayer printed in the bulletin. Let us pray. God of wind and fire, when you send your spirit, we are created anew. God of mighty oceans and still waters, when you see your baptism, 
God of bread and cup, when you eat at the table, you are nourished anew. But too often, God of love, our hearts, minds, and bodies are closed to your moving ground and forgive us. Forgive us, we pray. As you pour out your spirit this day and let sacred waters flow and fill us with holy food. May our hearts and our hands be open wide to receive the grace of life. Amen. Friends, hear and believe and proclaim the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, love breaks through hatred, hope breaks through despair, life breaks through death. We are forgiven, loved, and set free. Thanks be to God. Mungu ni mwema, Mungu ni mwema, Mungu ni mwema, ni mwema, ni mwema. Mungu ni mwema, Mungu ni mwema, Mungu ni mwema, ni mwema. Anybody want to play drums over here? to one another. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Also with you. Let us greet one another with signs of Christ's peace. And if you're joining us online, I invite you to unmute and say hello to one another. Peace be with you. Thank you for the impromptu drumming. I should have given you a heads up. Peace. Peace, Christ. peace be with you. Avali, peace hey guys. Oh, so good to see you. How are you? Good. I love your dress for Pentecost. Woo, careful. Do you have a mustache, Otis? Did you draw a mustache? You want to go to class? Oh, I love it, Arthur. Beautiful. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Verse, I'm not sure verse drives. Peace be with you. Hi, Ann. Okay. Okay. Hi, Joanne. Hello. Good to see you. Corey. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, Corey. Hi, Bruce. Peace be with you. Get well. Get Peace well. Hey, Barbara, you. thank you for your Peace note. You. Hey, June. Good to see Peace all of you. Very good to see you. Hey, Corey. Peace be with you, Joel. Mm -hmm. 
Whoops. Good to see you. Peace. Peace be with and you. And Thank you. And Mimi. I called you Joelle, but I know your neighbor. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. It's okay. Yes. Hey, Ruth. Peace, Elizabeth. Oh, yeah. Peace be with you. Peace. Morning, everyone. Are you Lem? Morning, everybody. Lem, I am. Beverly. Hi, Ruth. And Judy. Hi. Morning, good morning. Bernard, hi. Hi, Bruce. Hi, Bruce. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Julie. Hi, June, you're doing slides? June, are you doing slides? Pardon? Hello. Say again. Just asking whether June was doing the slides. Oh. How are you doing, Jim? Nice to see you. You look good this morning. Hey, Bruce. Breath to enter you and you shall live. I will raise 
his hands on you and will cause flesh to come for you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesy as he had commanded and as he promised and as I prophesy suddenly there was a noise rattling and bones came together one with one. I looked and there were sinews on them, and flesh that shone upon them, and skin that covered them, but there were no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy water, and say to the breath, Don't say to the Lord, God, come from the four winds, go to breath. For this day and day. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the bread came to them, and they be as strong on their feet, a fast morning. Then he said to me, Much of these bones are in whole house reason. They say, Our bones are dry up, and our food is fast. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Don't say it is not God. I am going to open the graves and bring you up from your graves, O oh, my king. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O oh, my people, I will put my spirit in you. And you shall be. And I will place you on your own soil, then you shall know that I am the Lord. I, the Lord, have spoken, and will ask. Say to you, this is your name. Thanks be to God. Um, I'm going to give you an alternative reading than what you see in your bulletin. For all my liturgy nerds out there, you might realize that this passage was last Sunday's passage, which was the Ascension, which is very similar to what happens at Pentecost, but it helpful to lead us up to the moment of Pentecost, which is why we are all here today. Some of us got the memo of wearing some type of red on our, on our clothes, which is a tradition that we do for 2,000 years now around the moment of Pentecost. So I'm going to read you all a story. Some of you, I'm not going to say many of you, right? Who knows? Many of you, some of you, a few of you probably know this. If you've been at a church on Pentecost Sunday sometime in your lifetime, you've probably heard this story. We often don't read it in other Sundays that aren't this teen-ish Sunday in May, somewhere in the middle of May is often when Pentecost is. I am going to invite you to hear our story from Acts 2, not Acts 1, Acts 2 today with fresh ears. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, 
these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only 9 o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in, in heaven and above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So I recognize that not all of us are church polity nerds. I mean, church uh, liturgy nerds which is great. You might not even know what a liturgy nerd is, right? A liturgy nerd is someone who really knows in and out the seasons of the church, why Advent is when it is, why Christmas is when it is, why Easter, which I still don't know why Easter falls when it does. They know why we do certain things in the church. So some of those are kind of high level, right? Everyone kind of has a good idea of celebrating those things. Pentecost is kind of down low, right, on the reasons why we do this as the church. Often, as we did in the office getting ready for this, we talk about Pentecost as being the birthday of the church, right? This is the moment where the work of the Holy Spirit goes beyond a small gathering of people who lived on a certain point on a map and is now spread and shared far and wide, right? This is the drop in the water that then sends the ripples out to the furthest corners of the earth. So now we have a worldwide church, a worldwide vision of who Jesus was, who Jesus is for them today, and who Jesus is calling the church worldwide to be tomorrow. The church is not this, right? It's not just Warner Memorial Presbyterian Church. The church is the story of God's people, which are all people scattered over all corners of the earth, eating all different kinds of food, singing all different traditional types of music, doing what humans do. And now we find a way to say, how do we help incorporate the story of the gospel into every type of culture and tradition? Not to change them, not to reform them, not to make them sound more like us, but to share the story of the gospel. The church is only the church when that happens. That's the point of what Jesus' ministry on earth was about, was sharing the story with as many people as you could possibly come in contact with. So at this moment, some, what year is this, 2024, right? This is more like 1,995-ish years ago, right? We're almost at 2,000 years ago of when this happened. So. 2,000 years ago, the moment where the story goes beyond the people who were there to witness it happen. This is the birth of the church. So at Pentecost, we then come together and celebrate the birthday, which is what we do annually, right? Of celebrating when something started, when a birth happened, we annually celebrate a birthday. You know what happens on birthdays? We recognize the person, we recognize all the accomplishments that they have. As you saw my two kids up here, one who already has marker all over his face <laughs> from smelling different flavors of marker down there. He's four, the other one's six. Their birthdays are a day apart from each other in September. This September, my family and all of our friends will celebrate their birthday. Right, we will, we will think of all the accomplishments that they have made over these seven and five years at that point. We celebrate the change. We celebrate the evolution of who they are. Birthdays are not moments for us to reflect back to the exact moment that it happened or to say, man, I'm, I'm so thankful for that moment and that nothing has changed. We celebrate birthdays because things are different. Things have changed. We have a new way of seeing the world. My, my seven-year-old at that point will be very different than the six-year-old that I know now. He will be a new 
creation. He will be a new person. We want to celebrate that. Pentecost is our invitation to celebrate what the Holy Spirit has been up to for 2,000 years, not just this moment 2,000 years ago. Change is something that is central to our faith tradition. Jesus' invitation for people as he walked the earth was to look at a new way of knowing who God was, was to change. We often interpret it as repent, but it means to change, to have a metanoia, a change in your heart so that you see something a little bit different. Because the way we saw something before is not complete. And for us to say the way we've done it before is the way we should move on going throughout our faith journey is counter to the central piece of our faith. I know people, this is not a Presbyterian joke, this is an American church joke. I know people in the church are afraid of that idea and that word. I came here and I stuck around because we didn't do things differently. It is counter to what it means to be the church, and it is not celebrating Pentecost. It is not celebrating the birth date of a movement that was designed to change people, to transform us. We see that word throughout all of Scripture, but I don't think we embrace what, it, what a transforming moment actually is. Transforming means to take on a new shape from what you were before. I am a child of the 80s. I grew up on the show in the movies, The Transformers. It meant everything to me. I had every toy you can imagine. So in the year 2000, when the new Transformer movie comes out and I'm 20 whatever, I run to the movie theater. I wanna see this moment. I, I, I love the movie. I buy it the first day it came out on DVD, if you remember what those things even are. I bought it on DVD. My mother wants to borrow a movie from my house and says, John, could you bring over a show for me and your, a movie for me and your dad to watch? I say, sure, I'll come over later tonight and drop off a movie. I have the new Transformers movie, which she remembers from me in the 80s. Give her the movie, go back home, go on the rest of my week, come back next week uh, to get dinner and probably do some laundry for free and pick up the movie. And I say, How would you, what'd you think? And she's like, well, there, there was just too much transforming. Mom, the, the movie's called Transformers. This is what they do. They take on a shape of a car, and then they take on the shape of a robot. And maybe some of them are airplanes or helicopters. They change shape. They transform. They become something new. That is central to our faith. And what it does is an opportunity for us to offer something different than the way we have been evolutionary designed to be, which means safety and security. We can now be in control of everything. And when we are in control of everything, we then get to say who is in, who is out, who gets to be part of our group and who doesn't. We are in control rather than the Holy Spirit. But the calling of the church from her very conception is to transform lives, yeah. which means we have to let go and let something new take shape and take hold. We should be thankful that the Holy Spirit has been doing this for 2,000 years. If we had fully gripped onto our control and the way we are doing things, there would be no reformation. There would be no Bible, which I don't have a hard one in here, but there's one in here. There would be no Bible for you to hold, for you to take to your house in your language and read it. That is transformation. If we didn't have that, there would be no access to the divine without a priest. We have helped change how humans get to see God. If we relied on our control, People of color, myself and many in this room, would not have seats at the table in all of our mainline denominations. If we had held on to our control, women like your pastor would not be able to be ordained to serve inside the church. If we have held on to our control, we would have said that you cannot celebrate this beautiful supper unless you have said some special secret prayer and committed yourself to our denomination 
creation in order to celebrate in the feast that God has for all people. If we have held on to our control rather than the transformation power of the, of the, of the Holy Spirit, our LGBTQ friends would not have a place at the table. For us to think that that work is now done of what the Holy Spirit is up to is foolish. Hold on, church. Hold on. Because change is afoot. In this Pentecost story, we have this image of a violent wind. They're, they're, they're clear about using terminology that makes it be strong and forceful. A violent wind that rushes in and brings everyone's attention. Wind, as we know it out in the world when we go outside, and maybe coming in through the cracks of these windows. Wind is simply different temperatured air moving in and forcing the other temperature air out of the way, right? So which means that we are going to be faced with a different weather. Wind is our sign that things are about to change. It's either going to get hotter, it's going to get colder, there's a tornado coming, there's a hurricane or a snowstorm. Something is going to be different. The wind the movement that we can't grab or hold or contain is the sign that, guess what? Something new is about to happen. And in the natural world, if we were to go outside and feel the wind and say, ah, I'll be okay. I don't need to grab a jacket. I don't need to be able to embrace what the new weather pattern is going to look like. We will be standing there sweating, freezing, wet, or running for shelter, right? The wind is our as our signal that change is afoot. Something new, a new way of interacting with the world is upon us. That is what this Pentecost moment offers for us. As we sit here and celebrate the beautiful collection of what it means to be the church, the beautiful collection of what it means to be Presbyterian church, also know that change is afoot. One of the conformants, who has, who has the Jordan Space Jam 11s on out here? Right there, I'm looking at you. <laughs> the, yeah, you, conformant, raise your hand, right? This guy has on shoes that I would have fought tooth and nail to have in, in eighth grade, right? Changes afoot that he can put on a wonderful outfit and come here and celebrate who he wants to be, who God has called him to be, not fitting in exactly with how his parents probably had a conversation at home about what to wear, but he is allowed to live into who he wants to be. All of these young people who are being confirmed today, they are the wind. They are bringing in a change. They are going to bring in a new way for all of us, including myself, who is still Presbyterian young, I'm 40, and for all of us to have a different way of seeing the church. Today, we celebrate the birthday of the church, but today we celebrate wind as the reminder that change is right here at hand. It is in front of us. So let's prepare what Presbyterians do very well. Let's get ourselves nice and organized and ready to embrace what the Holy Spirit is now up to as she once again changes the way we see each other, we see the world, and how we see the unchanging God moving in our lives. Amen. Amen.
Well, beloved, all of us, beloved children of God, we come to this moment when we celebrate the young people of this church who are committing themselves to Christ and to being members of this body. Members of the Warner Presbyterian Church, members of the Riverdale Presbyterian Church, members of the Church Universal. This morning, I have the great honor, the distinguished pleasure to both baptize and confirm some of our young people. Because those vows are very close and somewhat interchangeable, we're going to do it a bit together and uh, but honor those who are being baptized and also honor those who are confirming their faith this morning. So I am going to invite Elder Godlove Kobe, or I'm sorry, it's Susan, isn't it? Susan Dorn, Elder Susan Dorn, and, and Daniel Tanda, and also uh, Deacon Tim Cook to come forward. We're going to present the candidates, why don't you use this here? They're going to call the names of the candidates who are being baptized and confirmed this morning when your name is called, young people, I invite you to come forward. And after the young people are up here, I will invite parents, godparents, mentors, those who stand with these young people today to join us behind them so that we can support and lay hands on them. So. On behalf of the session of Riverdale Fellowship, I'd like to invite the candidates for confirmation to come up for us, beginning with Finn Akenji. <laughs> Just spread out here. Yeah, this is great. Yep. Shalom Akenji. Shalom Akenji. Joelle Nabila Kobe. Faye Nima. Nisiga. Nisiga. Anna Monka B. Tanda. Lumbilum Tanda. Neba Afani Tanda. Anna. Just stay there just a second. On behalf. Oh. Yeah, do that. Thank you. <laughs> or hold it. Okay. On behalf of the deacons of Warner Memorial Presbyterian Church, I present Paula Nina. Penong. Katrina Natalie Carol Mitchell. Prince Nellie Penong. Preston Noel Penong. And Presley Nathan Penong. What a group, eh? <laughs> As many of you were baptized into Christ and have clothed yourselves with Christ, there is no longer Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And so, friends, obeying the word of our Lord Jesus Christ and confident of his promises, we baptize those whom God has called. 
In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection by water and by the Holy Spirit. We were made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined in Christ's ministry of love, peace, justice, and hope. And so, beloved, let us remember with joy our own baptism as we celebrate the sacrament today. I invite those who are parents, godparents, mentors who would like to join us up front today to do that and stand behind our young people. And I invite you all to take two steps forward. So, those of you who are being baptized today, Latrina, Prince, Preston, Presley, Lem, Shalom. Am I missing something? Ah, Shalom. But that's it, right? Okay, just making sure. I ask you, do you desire to be baptized? If so, please say, I do. And the parents of these fine young people, do you desire that they be baptized? If so, please say, I do. I do. And relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to teach your child this faith? If so, please say, I do. And sponsors and godparents, do you promise through prayer and example to support and encourage Petrina and Prince and Preston and Presley and Lem and Shalom? If so, please say, I do. And congregation, do you as members of the Church of Jesus Christ promise to guide and nurture these young people by word and deed, by love and prayer, encouraging them to know and follow Jesus Christ and to be faithful members of his church. If so, please say, we do. We do. For those of you who are confirming your faith today or affirming your faith today, confirming the faith that you have been baptized into. We rejoice with you as you claim again the promises of God, which are yours through your baptism. Though we, through baptism, we enter the covenant that God has established, and in that covenant, God gives us new life, and we are guarded from evil and nurtured by the love of God and God's people. And embracing that covenant, we choose whom we will serve by turning from evil and turning to Jesus Christ. And so I ask you all, therefore, to reject sin, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, and to confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we were baptized. So first we will do the renunciations. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If so, please say, I do. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior? If so, please say, I do. I do. 
Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? If so, please say, I do. I do. So then with the whole church, let us confess our faith. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit as we proclaim the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, son of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from whence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Eternal and gracious God, we give you thanks. In countless ways you have revealed yourself in ages past and have blessed us with signs of your grace. We praise you that through the waters of the sea you led your people Israel out of bondage into freedom in the land of your promise. We praise you for sending Jesus, your son, who for us was baptized in the waters of the Jordan and was anointed as the Christ by your Holy Spirit. Through the baptism of his death and resurrection, you set us free from the bondage of sin and death and gave us cleansing and rebirth. We praise you that in baptism, you give us your Holy Spirit, who teaches us and leads us into all truth, filling us with a variety of gifts that we might proclaim the gospel to all nations and serve you as a royal priesthood. And so, gracious God, pour out your spirit upon us and upon this water, that this font may be the symbol of new birth. And may all who now pass through these waters delivered from death, be delivered from death to life, from bondage to freedom, from sin to righteousness. Bind them to the household of faith, guard them with all evil, strengthen them to serve you with joy until the day that you make all things new. To you be all praise, honor, and glory. Amen. Shalom. Shalom Be Akenji. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. You are marked and sealed as Christ's own forever, a beloved child of God. Next. Lamb, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. You are marked and sealed as Christ's own forever, a beloved child of God. Amen. Petrina. Petrina, Natalie, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You are marked and claimed as Christ's own forever, a beloved child of God. Amen. Prince, Prince, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. You are marked and claimed as Christ's own forever, a beloved child of God. Amen. Preston. Preston, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. 
You are marked and claimed as Christ's own forever, a beloved child of God. Amen. Presley. Presley, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. You are marked and claimed as Christ's own forever, a beloved child of God. Amen. For all of you claiming your faith today, you have publicly profess your faith to this congregation. And so I ask, will you be a faithful member of your congregation, share in its worship and ministry through your prayers and gifts, your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? If so, please say, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. Gracious God, in baptism, you claimed us, and by your spirit, we are, you are at work in our lives, empowering us to live a life worthy of our calling. We thank you for leading all these young people to this time and place of reaffirming the covenant you made with them in their baptism, affirming them in their baptism this day. Establish them in your truth, we pray. Guide them by your spirit that together with all your people, they may grow in faith and hope and love and be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Mentors and parents, I invite you to lay hands on your confirmands and baptismal candidates. And if you can't get close enough, lay a hand on the person in front of you. And if you are in the congregation, I invite you to raise your right hand and play. Yes, that's the deal. All right. Oh, Lord, uphold Presley and Preston and Prince and Petrina and Paula and Neba and Lem and Anna and Faye and Joel, and Shalom, and Fien. Daily increase in them your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence forever, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Before we welcome you to this ministry, I believe Miss Susan wanted to say a few words. Right? Is that wrong? You want our, to our confirmands, all of them, have been on a journey for the last year. And they've, I've watched them grow spiritually, emotionally, and physically, of course. We have been so blessed with the joy of encountering Adele, Reverend Adele, oh. in this process. And we're grateful to be here today with you and your congregation and your confirmants for this session. Oh. Thank you all so very much. And congratulations to all of you for all the hard work that you have done and demonstrated your spirit to us. Beloved, welcome to the church.
God has given so much to us, and in gratitude, we honor God with our gifts. We give God our gratitude, we give God our time and our abilities, and we give God our money. This morning, you'll be given some paper, and we ask that in addition to your financial contributions this morning, that will be shared among next year's confirmation preparation class, the Riverdale uh, Fellowship, and the Indonesian Church. Those will be your financial contributions. But in addition to that, we ask that you offer your other gifts. Perhaps one of your gifts has been to visit um, an elderly member of your congregation. Or as the confirmands did, they went and they served as a soup, at a soup kitchen. Perhaps it's driving a friend to a medical uh, appointment. There are many ways that we give back to God. And we ask that you put not just your financial contributions, but your other gifts on this paper. And your Thanksgiving. It is at this Thanksgiving. morning, <laughs> this, yes, your Thanksgiving too. This morning, we'll follow the Riverdale Choir to put our offerings in the plates that are in the front. I think we need to move a little bit. The Riverdale Choir will be doing a Cameroonian custom, which is to dance as they bring their offerings forward. Um, and we encourage you to dance. My home church is Gaithersburg Presbyterian, which has a large Cameroonian population. And a wise Cameroonian friend from that church, Samuel Beta, said to me, Chris, worship is a full body experience. So this morning, we encourage you who are Presbyterians from the head up to join our Cameroonian friends in dancing forward to worship God and bringing your gifts forward. So now I encourage those of you who haven't danced before, get up there and move your body. We've, well, we've warmed up our voices, we've stood up, but it is time to dance and give God our full body in our, in our worship. So I'm going to ask the Cameroonian choir to come forward or to start your dance, and we will follow them up. And please, bring the joy of worship and the joy of the Pentecost today. Anybody need paper for your Thanksgivings? Can we pass? Whoops. Puzzle tape. Paper for your Thanksgivings. Okay. Paper for Thanksgivings. Um, this is just, so there are, are there no envelopes in there? Um, Usually we have envelopes in the pew. I'm sorry about that. This is, this is, regardless of what monetary gift you may or may not give today, not everybody, right? But this is a Thanksgiving offering. Whatever it is, you just write oh, down ready. whatever you're thankful to God for. Something you're thankful to God for today. Okay. You're singing now, right? And we'll okay. bring it up. Come on. Mm -hmm. We'll bring it up. And we'll, we'll put it in the, uh, just fold it. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. Okay. There's no one, there's no I invite everyone to stand up because we're gonna be dancing, please. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. 
like Jesus. Nobody, nobody like him. There's no one. No one, no one like Jesus. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. No one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. Nobody, nobody like him. I look here. Yeah, look there, no one, no one. I touch here, yeah, touch there, yeah. no one, no one. I turn round, turn round, no one, no one. Nobody, nobody like him. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. Nobody, nobody like him. There's no one. No one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. Nobody, nobody like him. I look here. I look here, look there. No one, no one. I touch here, touch there. No one.
God was praised. Could you can you join me in the unison prayer of dedication? Bountiful God, we come with our offerings in response to your love. With the new life in Christ, we give ourselves in service to others. With the energy bestowed by the Spirit, we seek to inflame all your people with a zeal for your way. Receive the work we do and the gifts we bring, that they may become a blessing in your sight. Amen. that they will come from east and west and north and south, which is a thousands-year-old way of saying they'll come from everywhere, all corners of the earth, to sit down at a table, and being at that table will be in the presence of the kingdom of God. This table before us that we are going to figuratively gather around today, this table does not belong to Warner Memorial. This table does not belong to the Presbyterian Church. This table belongs to Jesus, and it is Jesus who offers us the invitation to come to this table to be able to have a taste of something that will transform our lives. Friends, let us go to God in prayer. Loving and gracious God, for your gift of the Holy Spirit, for the gift of the church, we say thank you. For these gifts in front of us of juice and of bread, we thank you. We ask that your Holy Spirit surround them and surround us to make, more, to make them more than just bread and juice, but to make them signs of the transformation that is working inside of each of us. Let this food sustain us spiritually as it does physically. Be with each of us as we come to taste who and what you are and have done for each of us. We pray all of this in the holy and beautiful name of Jesus, and all God's people said, amen. amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed by his best friends and turned over to the authorities, he sat down at a table, much like this one. He took a piece of bread, much like this one, and after giving thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body broken for you. In that same way, during supper, he took a cup of wine and poured out and said, this is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink from it, all of you. Friends, every time that we gather together around this table or any table like this, we publicly profess our faith, a faith in a God who came for us, a faith in a God who is with us, and a faith in a God who will lead us on. This is the feast of God for us, the faithful people of God. I invite our servers to come forward. In the basket, you will find juice and bread. We ask you to take those when you are ready. Friends, the feast is ready for all of us. And it is our custom here at Warner so that there is no barrier to the table and so that we all share one cup and one loaf. We serve only gluten-free bread and grape juice. Come, all is prepared. The gifts of God. These are the gifts of God. These are the gifts of God. These are the gifts of God. God love, these are the gifts of God. These are the gifts of God. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. These are the gifts of God. These are the gifts of God. CC, these are the gifts of God. 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 These are these are the gifts of God. What's my name? These are the gifts of God. These are the gifts of God. These are the gifts of God, Grace. These are the gifts of God, Grace.
Now that we have been fed by our God, let us return to our God in prayer. Will you join me in prayer? Merciful God, in crucifixion, blood was separated from body. But at this table, they are joined together inside each of us, knitting us together as your people. We ask that this food and drink give us the nourishment, the sustenance to carry on our journey of faith. Equip us, strengthen us to continue to do your work, sharing your gospel to each corner of the earth. We pray all of this in your miraculous and holy name. Amen. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit as we sing our closing hymn, we will go out with joy. And if anybody wants to drum along, you're welcome to. a feast i mean a feast prepared downstairs so much fabulous food you can access the social hall through stairs at the back through stairs at the front or through the elevator just to your right by the door off of connecticut avenue i hope to see all of you down there brothers and sisters go out into this world being reminded of the transformational power we find in the holy spirit the power that set the church into motion that we get to live into today. And wherever it is that you go and whatever it is that you do, always remember you are blessed. Amen. Amen. <laughs>